Hello and welcome to this short instructional video entitled Accutech Bates Radio Configuration. In this video you will learn how to quickly configure the Accutech Bates Radio to receive process data from a wireless Accutech field unit and to make this data available acting as a Modbus slave device to any RTU, PLC or other Modbus master device. The configuration of a typical field unit will be explained in another video in this series. So what we need to do here is to configure two connection links on the base radio. The Y star link between the base radio and the field units and the Modbus slave link between the base radio and the Modbus master device that will eventually pull the base radio for its aggregated field data. Let's begin by powering the unit up. Here we see a BR20 base radio. In the lower left corner, you can see the leads coming from a 24 volt power supply connected to the appropriate terminals on the BR20. As power is applied, the LCD shows information, including the base radio model number, firmware version, wireless status, RF, and the number of field units currently communicating with the base radio. To begin the configuration process, we must first enter the configuration menu. This is done by pressing and releasing the next button. Config is displayed. Press the enter button and password, then the default password 000 is displayed. Press the enter button four times to enter 000 as the password, and then set RF is displayed. Set RF is the first item in the config submenu, and this is where we set the Y star parameters required to talk to a group of field units. Press the enter button and RF Chan is displayed. This is a unique number that will allow the base radio to only communicate with field units that are also configured with the same RF channel number. Press the enter button and the factory default RF channel 000 is displayed. Using the enter button to scroll through the three digits and the next button to increment each digit, change the RF channel to the desired number. In my example, I would like to use RF channel 016 or 16. After setting the rightmost digit, Pressing the enter button will make the change in the base radio and RF Chan will be displayed again. Press the next button to display the next submenu item, BOD RT. Press the enter button to enter the BOD rate submenu. Using the next button, scroll through the available Y star BOD rates and choose the desired rate, making note that any field unit configured to use RF channel 016 will need to be configured with the same Y star BOD rate. In my example, I select 19.2K. Once the desired rate is displayed, press the enter button to accept the setting. BOD RT is again displayed. Press the next button to display the high RFID submenu item. Press the enter button to enter the high RFID submenu. Each field unit will be assigned its own RFID number within the overall RF channel group that is serviced by this particular base radio. The high RFID is used to limit the RFID numbers that the base radio will try to communicate with. If you have 10 field units with RFIDs 1 through 10, then the RFID needs to be 10 or higher. In my example, I am configuring the base radio with a high RFID of 50, which means that any field unit configured to talk to this base radio cannot have its own RFID number higher than 50. And once the desired high RFID is displayed, press the enter button to accept a new value and you'll see that high RFID is again displayed. Select the next button. Exit is displayed. This means that there are no more items in the set RFID submenu. Press the next button to scroll back to the first item in the submenu if you need to, or the enter button to exit the submenu as is shown here. Set RF is again displayed. Press the next button to display the next item in the config submenu. Modbus is displayed. This is where the communication parameters for the serial Modbus or Ethernet Modbus TCP link between the base radio and a Modbus master device is configured. In my example, the BR20 provides an RS-45 serial Modbus link only. Press the enter button to display the first item in the Modbus submenu, BOD RT. Using the same process as outlined previously, use the buttons to program the BOD rate and note that this rate will also need to be configured in the Modbus master device. In my example, I scroll through the available baud rates and select 38.4K. Press the enter button to accept this value and baud RT is again displayed. Press the next button to access the next submenu item, dev ID. 
Press the Enter button to enter this submenu. The device ID is the unique Modbus station address of the base radio. This number must differ from the Modbus station addresses used by the Modbus master device and any other base radio connected on the same RS-45 serial Modbus link. In my example, I have selected Modbus station address 10 for this base radio. Once the desired device ID is displayed, press the Enter button to accept the change. Dev ID is again displayed. Continue through the remaining Modbus submenu items and configure them to match the Modbus master settings, including parity, stop bit, Modbus mapping mode, Modbus station address mode, and word order. In my example, these have been set as follows. Parity is set to none. Stop bit is set to one. Modbus map mode is set to register mode. Modbus station address is set to standard and the word order is set to 1, 2, 3, 4. After the word order has been entered and order is displayed, press the next button. Exit is displayed. Press the enter button to exit the Modbus submenu. Modbus is displayed. Press the next button to scroll past the remaining items in the config submenu until exit is displayed. Press the enter button to exit the config submenu. Config is displayed. Press the next button until exit is displayed. Then press the enter button to return to the top level of the menu structure. The BR20 is now configured. The number of connected field units is now continually displayed. But because I have not yet configured any field units, the value is displayed as zero. Thank you for watching this video.